Rob Lowe is a creator, executive producer, and star of the Netflix comedy Unstable. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. Wanted to just kick things off, Rob, by asking you, how are you, how much are you like Ellis Dragon? <laughs> I kind of think it's the perfect amount of heavy lifting as an actor and an easy gliding. Um, into certain elements of myself that that I get to lean into. I, I always feel like, for most actors, the roles that work the best meet that same sort of mathematical equation. Just enough of them where it couldn't really be played by anybody else, but also, and then a large part of, you know, actual acting required in theory. Mm. Yeah. What, 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 what are, what are the things that are a bit of a stretch or the heavy lifting for you with Ellis and what are the things where you're gliding and it's sort of, you're leaning into your, yourself? I think it's, it's, it's just that the, the concept of playing a um, sort of big swing, larger than life, eccentric spectrum adjacent uh, tech billionaire um, is is obviously where the it's that's that's not me, um, and that and that's the challenge as, as an actor is to is to ground that performance to like you know larger than life means larger than life, but then it also has to be grounded and real and accessible and you know humane and human. And, and that's the fun of playing the characters is finding that. Mm. Um, and then the, the part that I get to just glide into is, you know, I'm looking at my actual son, yeah. you know, and, and there are times when I watch it and I go, well, what is, I've never seen that sort of look on my face, that kind of vibe, that kind of energy. I wonder where that's, oh, that's right. I'm talking to my son, John Owen. Yeah. Uh, you, you said you're the only one who could, like, you know, it's it's sort of a role only you could play, but if it had to be recast, who do you think could play Ellis? Wow. Jeez. Boy. You know, I I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, every once in a while you get lucky enough, or in this case we – got lucky and designed it, um, created it, where I, I, I can't picture anybody else doing it. And, and, and this is kind of really one, one of those times. Um, it's, I, you never know how people are gonna react to it, but I remember when Ted Sarandos saw it for the first time and, and Ted, in addition to everything else that he is, is a, connoisseur of comedy and and everyone's work who works on the netflix platform he's seen everything anybody's ever done and he was like i think this might be one of the best characters you've ever played and i was like wow coming from ted that meant a lot to me particularly as early on as it was in the process you don't think uh john stamos would play a good well that's john owen's answer you yeah. know that, i can't step on john owen's comic bits yeah. <laughs> john owen will tell you that anything i do stamos can do better yeah <laughs> well i just interviewed him rob and he uh asked me to throw that in there for for yeah. him so that's there you right. go. He, he yeah he knows he knows how to get my goat that little that little whippersnapper he he also wanted me to ask you do you have a favorite jackson scene Oh, favorite Jackson scene. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I actually like his debut scene um, where he's with the little kid and, and the kid says, my dad doesn't want me to play the flute. And I'm frustrated by that. And Jackson kind of loses the plot and talks about his own issues with his father, I think is, is a really great piece of acting because it's, it, he's lifting a lot of story pipe. At the same time that he's, and it's his very first scene in the show. Um, he's really good at. It. I probably wouldn't be saying it if he were on the Zoom. Yeah, with of him. course. 
But but since he's not here, he's really good in the show. Yeah, we'll have to send him a link to the chat because he's like, I'm not sure if he'll remember scenes that he's not in. Is what he thought. Um, But that's. that's a that, that's a that's a great scene and great answer um what does it mean for you as a father to be collaborating with your son on this work i mean it's the main thing is is uh, and people in this business understand even at the highest levels it's it's a hard business it's rewarding it's amazing but it's not an easy life um and when he told me he wanted to not be a stem cell biologist after having just graduated from Stanford, he wanted to be an actor. It was not a happy day in the low household, um, but it's his dream. And he had, ex- he had listened to me and exhausted every other option in life and kept being called back. That's what it has to be. And to, to see him be good at what he does, to see him be, so good in the writer's room, such a good writer. He was always a really good writer from the, from my earliest memories of him to see him be good and successful as a father is my favorite thing about this. It, in a world where it's tough, there's competition that he's the real deal is, um, is great. And, you know, you know, I guess he's a Nepo baby, you know, but, you know, that can only get you in the door and, and, and seeing him walk through the door that got opened and flourish is my, my favorite thing. When you have scenes together, how do you sort of listen to each other and build on each other? Because your two characters are often in such different places, but as actors, you need to listen and build on what each other is are offering yes and and because particularly they're they're also serving different masters you know john owen's character is the audience the eyes of the audience the straight man and you know he's you know liz lemon to my jack donaghy Hmm. and it's it's a different it's a different it requires different types of acting, it's different technique. You're, you're required to occupy a different frequency. Um, and both, you know, not easy to do and, 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 and really, really, really different. Um, for me to, to, to get a chance to play a part like this is kind of a dream because it's, I would watch shows that would have characters like this and go, I would love to one day find my iteration of that, which mm. is probably why we ended up here today. Yeah, there you go. Do, do, is there, like you mentioned Jack Donaghy, is there another character or something that you're influenced by or that you sort of see? Well, this, I mean, I'm, I, we, our, our influences in, in creating the show were those classic straight comedies that, that, only wanted to entertain you, make you laugh in a smart, unexpected way. They're not in the business of being edgy. They're not in the business of being dramedies or or overcooked pot boiling plots. It's Arrested Development. It's 30 Rock. It's Parks and Rec. Those shows which are not around today. Mm. Veep mm. would be another one. Yeah. Um, the, 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 those shows have the, the same, I think the same DNA as what we were trying to do. And Rob, you've had so many experiences on like diff- ensembles of different types of shows from a hard comedy like Parks and Rec to dramas like The West Wing and Brothers and Sisters and all these sorts of things. Yeah. Um, what have you learned from sort of on those different ensembles you've worked on that you bring into Unstable and the ensemble you have there? You know, it's like, to use a terrible hackneyed sports analogy, um, is 
each golf course you play requires different clubs. You play a lot of golf courses, you learn every club in the bag. And so you have, you have that to, to bring. I, I remember auditioning for the West Wing with Aaron Sorkin. He was reading opposite me. And when we got done, the whole room was laughing all the way through the audition, like la losing it laughing. And when we were done, Aaron turned to the president of the network in the studio and said, I told you guys this scene was funny. Because I, I, the other actors who had come in had not played the comedy. So I learned from Austin Powers, from Tommy Boy. You'd never think that that would help me play the West Wing. But it did. It did. And it, so I bring I, I, all of those experiences at some point you're going to use in, in anything. And in a, particularly in a part like Unstable, where there are so many levels to the character. Hmm. Yeah. No, that's good. Was that, what, what, what scene was that on the West Wing? Was that the scene with Laurie? It's, it's the very first scene. Yeah. Uh, he's in the pilot. It's Sam gives a two page speech to a woman asking who Leo McGarry's daughter is in that. Sixth oh, grade yes. Class. Yeah. The sixth grade class. Yeah. And he gives a very long speech about he's a, he's a, he's a good guy who's having a bad day. Yeah. And he's a, please, for the love of God, tell me which one of those kids is Leo McGarry's. Yeah. Grade class. That would be me. Yeah. And he's, yeah. Um, it's very funny. I mean, yeah. I read it. This is hilarious, but you know, not, you know, apparently not everybody saw that. I, I like finding the funny and stuff. Yeah. Um, we're, we're an awards website. I'll say the West wing did uh, very well at the Emmy awards. It actually won best drama series for each of the four seasons you were on the show uh, as regular cast. So that, that, that was just a, uh, is it, do you have a particular, like what was special about that experience for you? Oh. I mean, it's going to the Super Bowl in your first year in the NFL, four years in a row and winning it. Yeah. I mean, it was my first TV series, really. Um, and the, 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 I'll never forget the love for, for that show. And it, it matched the love that we had making it. And, um, those were heady, 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 wonderful, creative days. And uh, that, that that show would be on a network, on a network, mm. doing 22 a year. Yeah. Winning every award in sight seems like, based with what, we're, what we have today, it seems like it was a thousand years ago. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And d d like, what did you love most about that Sam character? Um, I, I, I loved that it was, I loved it the kind of, um, I love the comedy of it. I love that, you know, every character had sort of a lane. Aaron was very, very good with that, but, but Sam's lane was sort of a optimistic, comedic humanity, um, sort of puppy dog enthusiasm and, 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 and love of language that Sam had, um, really, really spoke to me, which is probably at the end of the day, why it was a role that was, I was meant to do. Yeah. I, I was so pleased when you guys came back together that uh, that Hartsfeld landing episode was what was yeah. chosen because that scene with you and Bartlett playing chess is maybe like my favorite Sam scene in the series. Uh, oh, thank like, you. What was that like um, both times playing that with Martin, like the original time and then the time when you got to do it again? So here are the two things I remember about both times. The first time was when I read the script. I did four years. There's a lot of scripts I read over four years. I remember where I was when I read that episode because out of nowhere, Bartlett said, don't worry, Sam, you'll be president one. You'll run for president one day. You can do it. Don't be scared. 
And I remember reading it and just like tears streaming down my face. Um, and then redoing the scene, however many years later it was. A lot, like 20 or something, probably. 20 years later, like you'd think it would, and I'd never had an experience doing anything like that, like revisiting not only a character, but a scene I'd already played once so many years later. And I realized I'm not the same, like I can't, it's, di it's different. There was a, I'm a older, I'm a middle-aged guy now. And Sam had a kind of, like I, I found it much harder to access this sort of wide-eyed puppy enthusiasm that Sam had. And I, so I just said, I'm going to play it as I, as Sam would be today and not try to recreate mm. the actor that I was 20 years ago. And, and there's, there's just like Sam did, Sam never had any real gravitas. And, you know, you get, you make it to a certain age in the world, you've got some gravitas. Mm. And, and so that was an added element to it that, that I think, um, I was like, oh, wow, this is, feels really different and the same at the same time. Yeah. Like, lucky you didn't do 20 hours in America again and Sam didn't have to fall out of the bed. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I remember that one, too. I remember, yeah. It's funny. I remember all that. I mean, it was such a great, you know, every once in a while you get a great one. You get, you get one you can really sink your teeth into. And that's like when Ted said greatest role, I was like, bro, mm. I know he's seen The West Wing. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I like that. That's good for Unstable. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and taking it back to Unstable for us to sort of finish off uh, with a couple of questions about that show, what is it about Unstable, like uh, what is it about Unstable that makes it one of the great ones? What is the thing that sort of um, you're just having the most fun doing on the show? I think that it is a show about fathers and sons, makes it super accessible to no matter who or where you are the fact that they're the nearest thing i can think of a father and son show would be my beloved succession <laughs> is a very different flavor yeah and and that it that it's continuing a tradition that has kind of fallen out of favor that I believe in, which is hard, no fooling, laugh out loud comedy. Yeah. Um, with real emotion. Mm. Why is that so important, Rob? Because you said we've moved away from that in television. Why do you think there's such, why do we need that on TV? You know it's funny and I'm trying to think of why we've moved away from it. It's a little bit like me. It's, you know, it's like music, you know, genres come and genres go. Um, and, and we're definitely in the moment of, you know, tremendous pr provocative in your face, edgy, um, dramedies. Yeah. Um, or super emotional character driven shows that are slightly funny. Hmm. Yeah. And, and I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, and I love all of them, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, no. They're good all shows. All of them. But, but I, but why this is withered on the vine, I just, I just don't know. I did a show called The Grinder for Fox yeah. that, that is, remains one of my favorite things I've ever done. Mm. And I'm grateful that we did 22 of them, but we couldn't make that show inevitably find the audience that they wanted. That show's funny as hell. Yeah. What, I, what? I put that show up there with anything. I, yeah. I, I do. I'm like, bro, if you, if you want to see some, go watch The Grinder. But yeah. you know, it, it, it's, uh, that, that's why I'm so happy that people like you are championing Unstable. Because you wouldn't think that a show like this 
would be in any way fearless. Mm. But it actually is in today's world. Yeah, like just turn ki- something very dark, like kidnapping of a therapist into a real comedic situation where you have just, you know, these zany characters bouncing off each other, which is really fun. What? So why do you think it's so important to have shows that are pure comedies like this one on TV? Well, I, I just think that there's nothing like laughing. Mm-hmm. The endorphin release, um, the... In, in smart comedies, you know, it's, it's the, the, again, the shows that I, that have turned me on, I've listed them a bunch already on, on the podcast, but they're, they, they don't, they, they don't underestimate the audience. They, they don't go for the easy joke. They don't go, it's not expected. Um, that's super important to me. Um, and yet they go down easy. They're light on their feet. You have a smile on your face the whole time. You feel good watching them. Nobody is giving you a lecture about anything. And you talk about inclusive. That's as inclusive as it gets. Yeah. It, it's, it's literally meant for and played by everybody. Mm. Well, Rob, it's been such a pleasure talking to that, talking to you today. When I spoke with John earlier, he loved that I had the West Wing DVDs next to the Emmys book because he said you never won an Emmy for the show. <laughs> um, which yeah, he will like, never, he will never, yeah. ever, ever let me forget that. Yeah, and it's like um, it's funny that like talking about that Hartsfield landing. You and Martin were the two, pretty much the two people on that show that didn't win an Emmy Award for it. Isn't so. that amazing? Isn't it amazing? I mean, I, that Martin Sheen, here are my two favorite things about the Emmys. Yeah. Martin Sheen never won an Emmy for Bartlett on, on one of the most awarded shows ever. Yeah. And Steve Carell. Never won for The Office. On The Office. Do you mean to tell me for seven? I think it, was, it might even have been more than seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. But for seven years, there was someone funnier than Steve Carell on television? I, I one look, year, maybe two years, but seven? I think you have named two of, I think, the great Emmy crimes. I think you have uh, gone to the heart of it, Rob. So uh, thanks so much for chatting with us. And uh, people can go to goldderby.com. And all the best of luck for Unstable at the Emmys. Maybe there could be some justice for you there. Uh, yeah. Rob, it's been so lovely to talk. Thanks so much. Thank for your time. you. You're great. I, lo- I love your deep, your deep well of knowledge and love for West Wing. That makes me really happy. It's what got me into this. Like, like it's what got me into following the Emmy Awards and TV. I just that I started watching it my first year of high school, and it just, yeah, it just meant a lot to me that show. That's awesome. Well, well, well thank you for the support. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. No worries. Have a good one, Rob. We'll see you sometime. Mm-hmm.